So for Daryl Ayers, the deck on Amulet Titan, uh, you may know this one, uh, the, the card Summer Bloom, of course, getting banned a little more than a year ago. It's had to, as a result, become more of a mid-range deck. So you see Daryl starting off on the card Sakura Tribe Scout. Savior's a Kamigawa all-star right there. Yeah, well, without Summer Bloom, the decks had to resort to kind of slower advantage on extra land drops. They have four copies of Explore and four Sakura Tribe Scouts mm -hmm. in Ayers' list today. And with the Tribe Scout, you really check your opponent for an early removal spell. Of course, blue-white control, the only thing they could possibly have is a path. It's really good in this kind of matchup. Yeah, Ancient Strings from Daryl finds a copy of Amulet of Vigor and some lands. Now, what's interesting to see is what Daryl will choose to take here. In the blue-white matchup, Amulet of Vigor is actually not a very important card in this matchup. At the, you know, at the end of the day, Amulet of Vigor just makes extra mana. Well, the real question is, Daryl has seen Temple of Enlightenment. Right. This actually signals ad nauseum more than anything. That was exactly what I was thinking. On Daryl's side, I would assume I'm playing against ad nauseum. And if that's the case, I'm taking Amulet of Vigor easy. Ad nauseum is a bad matchup for this deck, and your best chance is to race them. Yep, you want to start trying to kill them early and often and get all those Angel's Graces out of their hands. Right, and Daryl does take the Amulet and cast it off Radiant Fountain. And you're going to see a lot of utility lands here out of the Amulet deck. Radiant Fountain has been a go-to for a while. It's great against burn decks. Remember, these one-ups matter. This is a primeval titan deck. Mm -hmm. Grove of the Burn Willows has been a recent inclusion in the deck. And a lot of that is due to the fact of the, the deck Death Shadow. Yeah, being able to make your opponent gain life and shrinking yeah, their <laughs> creature is a pretty funny interaction. It's a cheeky way to get your untapped green mana. Of course, this is neither the matchup. For either of these cards, you know, you gaining life, them gaining life doesn't really come into play against blue-white control. Yeah, it's actually interesting. From the amulet side, blue-white control and Jeskai control are very different decks. Jeskai control, you can almost always beat in the late game because they play cards like Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, perhaps, things that don't really work. Blue-white, Ryland's strategy sometimes is to kill every creature in Daryl's deck and then let the creature Daryl mill out naturally. Mm-hmm. You see your path to exile on the Sakura Tribe Scout. Daryl didn't actually make a land drop in response with Tribe Scout. He does have the trick here. I like this. When someone paths you and you have an amulet in play, Daryl makes sure to untap that basic forest. Oh, yeah. Let him know who's boss. But there should be some concern. So Daryl, that was not a summoning sick Tribe Scout. In mm -hmm. response, Daryl could have tapped and put a bounce land into play, but he chose not to. Right. Is there ever a strategic reason why you wouldn't put one in? i got to figure that you're activating that every time if you have the land. So the strategic reason could be if Daryl's only land in hand is a bounce land, and he has an Azusa Lost But Seeking in hand, what he actually would want to do was not put the land in play, get the forest, next turn play Azusa on three mana, play the bounce land three times and Titan. Yeah, I suppose if you only have one, you have no you, other way to pick it up. Exactly. If you only had one, that and that's the only reason I could think of, and we see here Daryl playing Tribe Scout and Explore and missing the land drop. So that wasn't what happened. Mm. And really missing land drops in this matchup is, is scary. And I think going back to that, to Ancient Strings, if Daryl realized playing against Blue-White, he t him taking Amulet instead of another land drop has really come back to hurt him. Yeah, certainly mi after missing the land, that's absolutely true. And it might have just been upfront better in the first place. Right. Well, if he thought he was going to set Nauseam, the card Amulet of Vigor is really important. Yeah, you, know, you just got to race. <laughs> Turns out he doesn't really have a hand for racing either. And now Daryl does play a copy of Cavern of Souls, naming Giant. Not naming Snake? Uh, you'd name Scout, <laughs> actually, before you name Snake. There's an interesting thing. Uh, there are more than one Scout is in the Is Azusa a Scout? No, but Tireless Tracker is. Okay, okay. Daryl, the way he has chosen to fight this matchup, he has two copies of, of Cavern of Souls in the main and a third in the sideboard. The stock builds will have one in the main, zero in the board. So this is a pretty big endorsement of the card, and it's going to help him out some against blue-white. Yeah. He's able to couple, find a couple more land drops. He can start casting Primeval Titans. Of course, the blue-white control deck has a number of hard answers to that creature on the battlefield. Yeah, blue-white's not actually a control, a counter spell based control deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've already seen a Path to Exile cast. There's a Detention Sphere in hand. Assuming it doesn't kill you, you get access to the Sorcery yeah. Speed stuff like Sphere and uh, Supreme Verdict. There's a good game of kind of cat and mouse here going on between the two players. You see, well, Spreading Seed is going to hit the Cavern of Souls from Ryland. But Ryland has a Detention Sphere in hand, and Daryl has a second amulet. Daryl has not committed the second amulet either. Mm -hmm. So being rewarded for that patient play. Yeah. 
I mean, on, on turn one, Daryl might have thought he was playing against Ad Nauseam. The cat's out of the bag now. No reason to commit into the sphere. Yeah, on turn one, you're going to drop two amulets when you have them because those are your best draws in the deck. Yep. At this point, one amulet is sufficient. If he draws a bounce land, he can immediately make a primeval titan. He actually could still make it uncounterable. He could play the bounce land, untap it, make two, pick up that cavern under the spreading seas, put it into play off Tribe Scout, cast the titan. Yep. Daryl playing a copy of Teleria West. It untaps due to Amulet of Vigor. Yeah, despite being spreading seas, he only had one blue mana, <laughs> so he couldn't have transmuted that one if he wanted to. Got to figure it's worse than a bounce land here. Yeah, it's worse than a bounce land. I mean, he really just needs to get to six. This is a primeval titan deck. Yep. And in a lot of ways, because this matchup is so slow, him having the Teleria West in play is almost as good as him having it as him having it in his hand. The one worry here would be that Ryland ghost quarters it. Yep. That would really be a loss for Daryl. Yep. Inevitably, you get to a point where this deck transmutes that, sometimes multiple times in a turn. Right. Well, there's only th the big thing is if Ryland's plan is to run Daryl out of threats, which it pretty much is. You have to remember there's only three Teleria Wests in Daryl's deck. When he's done transmuting them, then his Titans are really just 6-6s. Six yep. And it's an opportunity. Ryland with his land drop is a copy, it looks like, of Tectonic Edge. If he's heads up, yeah, and he'll take care of the Teleria West. That's a big win for Ryland. Yeah. Showing some experience in the matchup, for sure. We'll see. And now Daryl's going to make that play I talked about. He drew his bounce land, so he taps to make a mana off Spreading Seas. Makes a second Amulet of Vigor. This is her big turn. Uses Sakura Tribe Scout to put the cavern of the, the Simic Growth Chamber into play. It doesn't have two amulet triggers, so untaps, makes two, untaps again. And now Daryl's going to bounce the Cavern of Souls under the Spreading Seas. He's making sure to use the Tribe Scout first. That's correct. Now Cavern will name Tite Giant, and here's an uncounterable Primeval Titan from Daryl. Because double amulet, we still have blue green up. Yeah, still blue, no mana floating, but he still has the Simic Growth Chamber there. Now, it'll be interesting to see how Daryl plays. In a combo matchup, you'd get Boros Garrison Slayer's Stronghold. It would be able to give it haste, get another Titan trigger. But Daryl's got to know that that's no good here. Yep. This way you might see him get Teleria West, Bounce Land, start transmuting that just for packs and titans. Right, you want to get those Teleria Wests out of your deck and into your hand. That's a really strong plan. He's giving us some pause, though. Outside of just getting titans, you know, what would you look for in this kind of matchup? Right, so in his main deck, he doesn't have as many options, but he can get... One thing is, I mean, he, they're all going to start with the Teleria West. But in this situation, uh, the Walking Ballista in the main is actually a really powerful card in the matchup. Sure. You can even get to a point where you use a Bounce Land to pick up the Cavern and name Construct. Right, you can do that. And especially if you have Tribe Scout, two Amulets, and Walking Ballista, you can start putting counter. Every turn, you are putting so many counters on the Walking Ballista, as long as you have a Bounce Land still in your hand. Mm -hmm. Daryl's going to get double bounce land. They both untap. He's going to pick up two lands. This signals that he might have another Titan. Sure. Yeah, six mana on the table there. Yeah. A little bit more with the amulets, I suppose. Yeah, makes another Titan. And now, if that resolves, and it does, now we might see him go for the, Bo the Slayer Stronghold Boros Garrison. Because it has two untaps off these two amulets, he could give both Titans 2-0 oh in haste. That's too good to pass up, I think. Yep. Casual 16 damage coming in. Untap both. Makes, floats mana, gets a Teleria West, transmutes. He's going bigger still. That's a cool trick with the deck. When you tutor up Teleria West, you make the two mana, pick it up, and transmute it off of the mana that it itself generated. Yeah, I mean, really fun stuff happens like this with two amulets. Stairs and transmute for Pact of Negation. And picking up the Pact is nice here because with the mana that Ryland has up right now, he, he, only, he only has three mana. He could maybe path one of these Titans. So what Daryl just had is he had all the Titans in his hand. He casts a third one. Now that he has the counter spell back up, this is a strong situation. Now, Supreme Verdict can still get him. Mm -hmm. But Ryland has to have another turn for that to be the case. Right. So Titan now gets Boros Garrison Slayer Stronghold. 
Well, as long as he has a path to exile, he, he's going to avoid the double strike. Well, if he has two path to exiles because of that pact. Yeah, he does have the protection for it. So yeah, Slayer, Stronghold, Boros, Garrison to play for Daryl. Two untaps off each amulet. So it's going to untap once. He can target one Titan. And then they untap again. He's going to have the garrison bounce itself. He's showing those are all the cards revealed. Casting Azusa. At this point, he's, he's styling a bit. <laughs> giving another Titan haste and giving the third Titan haste oh, using uh, the Azusa extra land drops. And then they all attack. Yeah, he, he needed the Azusa to give the third one haste, right? Yes, he needed the Azusa yeah. to give the third so one haste. So it's not really even styling. I mean, this is just giving him lethal this turn. Two, yeah. two Titan attacks, that doesn't do it, right? No, he's a good, well. I guess he, yeah, he has a, so many triggers. Yeah, he has the Vesuva, Vesuva for Garrison. and Sun Home. Yeah, well, with three Titan triggers, what you do is you get Gruel Turf Celestia Sanctuary. It's why they play the one of Sanctuaries, because these two bounce lands add up to the activation for Sun Home. Sure. And with these double untaps, he's going to double strike multiple Titans here. Mm -hmm. This deck's still great. Uh, yeah, you, you wouldn't have much trouble convincing me that this turn was a powerful sequence. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't beat an ensnaring bridge, but you know. There's a plan for that. Daryl's yeah, yeah, gonna yeah, take yeah. the first game. I, obviously. There's a the thing about the deck the, the full Tulare, of tutors, there's a plan for Tulare everything. Tulare West would have searched different cards in that circumstance. See then then you get the colony garden, the zero one, and then you get the plant, and you give it plus attack with it, then give it plus two plus oh, then give it double strike. I don't know if this is the A plan. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to get really spicy against the Stary Bridge, because you only get one Titan, right? Yeah. He gets, uh, if you put a Kessig Wolfron in your deck, you get the Colony Garden and Kessig Wolfron, and then boom, problems, hey. problem solved. Easy. So game one's going to go over to Daryl Ayers here on Amulet Titan. A, a big turn like that. And you saw some experienced play. The holding back of the second Amulet so that Ryland didn't get the detention sphere meant that Ryland never committed it. You saw Daryl made the second Amulet on, turn, on the turn he was going to combo. Mm-hmm. Ryland was pretty heads up as well, you know, destroying the Terry yeah. West with the Tectonic Edge. He just had a draw that really didn't line up there. And this is a tough match for him, I have to figure. Uh, it can be it can be tough. Uh, we'll talk about the sideboard in a second. Now, at Star City Games, we have our weekly sale. These are different things. Select items on sale over at StarCityGames.com. We have a different sale each week. For this week, it has been 10% off select graded and scanned vintage and legacy singles. You can go ahead and see the deals we have on our site, StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. That'll be going on all weekend. And be sure to check in on Monday morning when we switch over to next week's weekly sale. So look at the sideboards here for Ryland. He has three laying out, laying out of Sanctity, two Rest in Peace, two Stony Silence, two Negate, two Dispel, Supreme Verdict, a Graft Gator's Cage, a Vanillion Click, and a Geist of Saint Traft. Not a lot that lines up well here. A lot of this catch-off stall. Catch-all stuff doesn't really match up here. You could see him reach for Geist and Vanillion Click just to try to actually close the game before he just dies to the combo. Some argument for another Supreme Verdict just to try to clean up Titans and win the game that way. Uh, and then the gates, the dispels, the stuff's reasonable, but this is going to be a pretty tough matchup for him. Yeah, well, there's some things to like on on Ryland's side. Supreme Verdict actually is very good here. Dispel is good. A lot of times, Daryl's, I mean, most of Daryl's cards, especially Count, are countering instance, summonings yeah. pack, uh, fighting over pact negation, that stuff comes up. Right. Uh, I think Vendillion Click is good in a, in a similar way. It is possible for Ryland to run Daryl out of threats yep. at a certain point. Uh, what Daryl's trying to do is set up a big turn like the one he had there. We'll move over to Daryl's sideboard. There's really two ways to approach this matchup. The first one is to just kind of power your threats through by overloading on cards like Cavern of Souls, which is what Daryl's been on this time okay. this, with this build. The other option, and I, I know when Daryl and I were talking about this, um, is sometimes you'll see them. he was playing a, with Mortuary Myers and a more value-oriented plan where he makes it impossible to run out of threats. So he's gone for the uncounterable nature. So he's going to board in this third Cavern of Souls. He's going to board in additional threats to prevent himself from being run out. So we're looking at two Tireless Trackers. We're looking at the Hornet Queen, the Rurikthar, the Thrag Tusk. We're probably going to see these two Swan Songs as well. 
Sometimes I have waking nightmares about Cavernous Souls casting Rorik Thar. That's <laughs> really good against these blue decks. Yeah, what's actually interesting is I wouldn't be surprised to see Daryl board out one or all of his copies of Amulet of Vigor in this matchup uh, just to go for more threats. It doesn't... That turn was really exciting <laughs> on Daryl's side, but it's not completely necessary. Right. Not necessary. Also, it, it was just like a lot of stuff coming together at the same time where if, if you're missing one or two of those pieces, you don't have as big of a turn. If you don't have as big of a turn, you do this stuff and the Path to Exile just gets you. Then the Amulet feels like a mulligan. Right. You can't have that explosive a turn without double Amulet. I mean, what really helped Daryl there is he had triple Primeval Titan in his hand and the Cavern of Souls. And, we, and I specifically mean Primeval Titan and not Summoner's Pact. Right. And when he has that, he can do really neat things like we saw in that game. Mm -hmm. You know, Swan Song, the go-to counter spell out of Amulet Titan, that is a nod to the card Blood Moon. The yep. deck does scoop to the card Blood Moon, so you need a counter spell that could answer it. In the past, you'd see Amulet players play Seal of Primordium, a, which could sit on the battlefield, you know, it would allow you to tap out and then not lose to a Blood Moon. That card's actually become less playable in Amulet Titan recently uh, because the decks that board in Blood Moons don't have any other targets for it. Sure. Like, you used it against Splinter Twin before because it was good against Blood Moon, good against the card Splinter Twin. It was fine. Uh, boarding in Seal of Primordium against Storm is really <laughs> not a good feeling. Less than ideal. Yeah, Swan Song can also tag Gifts on Given, for example. Right, so so Amulet's gone more toward trying to attempting to counter Blood Moons rather than, uh, rather than seeing Nature's Claims or Seal of Primordiums. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about the Amulet Titans deck's ability, ability to mulligan? Uh, so this is actually something, I'm a big fan of it. A lot of times with ramp decks, so I play a lot of red-green Valakut, I hate mulliganing with the deck. Uh, for you to get to six mana on time, you need all your cards, every card you're down hurts. I have felt like with Amulet Titan, your first mulligan is more or less free. You're going to see a lot of games because where you just have an extra, you know, you have an extra bounce land. You have extra material to get to six mana. Mm -hmm. So six cards plus a scry doesn't feel appreciably different than seven cards of the deck. Yeah, I got to figure in a matchup like this where, you know, you have a bunch of time and also, as you say, you're boarding out amulets. It's more forgiving on the kind of hands you can keep on six cards as well. Yeah, well, the deck's really is interesting in that once you make a primeval titan, your draw step becomes very irrelevant. Right. You're a deck full of tutors. A lot of times, actually, if I get to scry, say off a of Serum Visions or something like that, and I see a good card, I will put it to the bottom because I'd rather have the cards in the deck than in my hand. So as long as Daryl's hand gets him to six mana, I don't, I actually don't want other cards in it in his hand. So mulliganing's fine in a lot of ways. Sure. As long as you have the first land to pick up to your bounce land and start making mana. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't keep a hand with all bounce lands. And he does play <laughs> nine. Interesting enough, you can play Vesuva with no targets. That's fine. There's, there's <laughs> quirky things like that in the deck. Fine is a good way to describe that play. And we see our first Ixalan card from Ryland. Search for Azkanta, turn two here. Yeah, this is a card that's shown up in some Magic Online League results. Explore, turn two from Daryl. Cavern of Souls, naming Giant. The standard fare. Could have been Scout, we're early enough in the game, but it is not. He'll use his extra lander up on a Simic Growth Chamber. Search for Escanta from Ryan. Ryland did not use it, I don't think. Yeah, so at the beginning of this upkeep, he gets to do something pretty similar to Scrying One. You look at your top card, you can either leave it on top or put it in your graveyard. Then if your graveyard has seven more cards, you can transform Search for Escanta. Turns into a legendary land. And around play Wall of Omens makes a land there. You see he, he has boarded in some of his dispels, one in his hand. And it kind of shows how little he has in his sideboard that he's leaving Wall of Omens in in this matchup. Yeah, it's not horrible. It just cycles, but it, as a blocker, it doesn't do anything. In a format as efficient as modern, just cycling is, in fact, horrible. Yeah, I can see that. Land four here from Ryan he'll say go. It's drawn Sphinx's Revelation. It's a little early for that. <laughs> You often see this as a one of. Some people are ambitious and play two copies, Ryland just with one Sphinx's Revelation. You don't want to draw it early, but you're usually very happy to see it late. Ancient Stirrings from Daryl will give him his choice of lands. 
does have a Simic growth chamber here and a gemstone mine. The gemstone will allow him to transmute Teleria West, whereas the bounce land is better, and he'll go for the growth chamber. Remember the Amulet Titan deck playing 28, anywhere between 27 and 30 lands in the main deck. Really, the goal is to get to six mana worth of lands. Yeah, and certainly in a matchup where you're boarding out the amulets, you're basically finding lands exclusively with Ancient Stirrings. Yeah. You're finding lands. Uh, they have a uh, Walking Ballista and Engineered Explosives are the other cards you could find. Mm. I don't think engineer. Even though it, it, I guess engineer explosives on two is live here. I don't think <laughs> Daryl would take it. Yeah, it wouldn't be the most. It would technically destroy two cards. And here we have another cavern results. We're going to cavern out Rurik Thar the Unbowed. Yeah, this second cavern is on Ogre, and we'll get a look at this card out of the sideboard. A powerhouse against Storm. <laughs> uh, this one's going to be great. And we see, with Rurikthar on the stack, Ryan's going to bounce Sterile's Growth Chamber and draw a card. Yeah, I like the play here. You couldn't counter Rurikthar on the way down. If you wanted to bounce Rurikthar and try to buy time, that's all he would be doing. He's setting up here to maybe be able to Detention Sphere or Supreme Verdict the Rurikthar. He would take six for that, but Daryl's not exactly a beatdown deck. Yeah, to, I mean, he's, and he's going to have to take six, but... That said, it, it's okay. Here's Detention Sphere from Ryland. He'll go to 11, but get rid of the Ogre Warrior. And here's the game plan I was talking about where I was saying that you have to be concerned as the Amulet player that, the, that your, your blue-white opponent will actually just remove all your threats. Yep. And then you'll naturally mill out. Daryl does so much tutoring that he always mills first. Mm -hmm. Even with this Wall of Omens trigger. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's... <laughs> going to float a mana, pick up the cavern set to Ogre. There are no more Ogres in the deck, so that part's fine. He'll play Azusa, Lost But Seeking. And we'll see where Ryan's experience level is in the matchup. Azusa is a, in a lot of ways, feels like it should be a red flag card. But in this matchup, Ryan actually can ignore Azusa. Yeah, it's just going to make some land drops. You want to save those paths, hit all those titans. Right, yeah, if his plan is just... I mean, the, the issue with Amit is that the number of lit actual threats in the deck is somewhat small. Yeah. You can just kill them all. And Wall of Omens checks Azusa mighty fine. <laughs> That's what it's for. Search for Azkanta again for round. I have to think he just wants to find more lands. He'll bin a temple. That's now six cards in the graveyard. Almost time to flip the search. Draws Supreme Verdict. A couple Planeswalkers in this build of blue-white. If Ryland could get a Gideon online with some counter magic up, he could start trying to win the game that way. Yeah, he has two copies of Gideon Ally of Zendikar and two copies of Gideon of the Trials. Thrag Tusk, the draw for Daryl. Yeah. And you can assume in this matchup that every creature Daryl casts will be used, will be put through a Cavern of Souls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, once you have a Sousa bounce land, it's fairly easy to just yeah. reset that. Right, so he resets it to Beast, makes Thrag Tusk. Looks like he's going to drop some more lands. Nanas Boros Garrison play. He's going to make the beast mana off Cavern and then pick up Cavern. This is his only beast. So once he makes Thrag Tusk, there's no reason to still have Cavern set to that. And here's Thrag Tusk. Something that Daryl, the one thing you do care about with the Azusa is that Daryl would want to keep a bounce land in hand if it's possible. If he draws one of his copies of Tireless Tracker, Tracker Azusa is a very powerful combination for this deck. Oh, yeah. Can make quite a few clues that way. Sphinx's Revelation from Ryland, and Daryl is going to Pact for Primeval Titan while Ryland is tapped out. And that's a pretty heads-up move, even though he'll have to pay for the Pact next turn. Yeah, you know, Ryland, his counter spells are largely dispels and negates. You can hit Pact with that, you can't hit Titan. Yeah, Ryland had one of each in hand, so Daryl's doing a great job of keeping those blanked. And plenty of green sources for Daryl as well. Ryland couldn't really spreading seas or ghost quarter Daryl out of being able to pay for that pact. Yeah, four sources, that's probably too much. 
And Ryland going to now flip that search for Ascanta into Ascanta, the sunken ruin. Which Daryl will immediately ghost quarter. Yeah, if Ryland wants to get an activation off of this, Daryl forces him to do it now. And we look for search for, at search for Ascanta, just one in Ryland's deck, so he's not going to be able to rebuy that. Not especially the matchup for it anyway, though the card's fine. You see Ryland still has seven cards in his hand. And play Celestial Colonnade. And Ryland just not willing to pull the trigger just yet on that Supreme Verdict. Upkeep Dare will pay for the Pact. It wouldn't be the most impressive verdict. <laughs> Taken down a 1 2 and a yeah. 5 3 that replaces itself. I agree. I'm interested to see how he wants to answer the Thrag Tusk. Maybe he's planning to block it with Colonnade. I'll block it with Wall of Omens for a turn. And yeah. I kind of like this. This, yeah, this is free here. Uh, that wall is dying to the Supreme Verdict anyway. Yeah, so this means that Daryl can't reload another threat just yet. Cavern of Souls for Daryl. Believe naming Giant. I just assume every every creature is going to be put through Cavern of Souls. Mm -hmm. and, and look around Sandway. I think we have two dispels and a negate. It's a little heavy on that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, with a hand like that, it was really unfortunate to get uh, tagged by the Summoner's Pact like that. Of course, he has to solve the battlefield before that becomes an issue. Yeah, well, that's one of the hard parts about S Sphinx's revelation is that you have to tap... You need to tap all your mana when you cast the card. Yep. Or you can undercast it, but then it's really an inefficient card. Oh, yeah. yeah. So here's an uncounterable Primeval Titan. And Daryl, rather than getting Bounce Land, is, is going to get two Teleria Wests. And that makes a lot of sense, just to get these into play, get them mm -hmm. out of his deck. Eventually, he'll draw Bounce Lands if he doesn't already have them, and then he can transmute. Yep, starts picking those up. Those can find blue or green packs. Both of those are going to be fine. He's going to want some green packs after this board gets Wrath away. If it doesn't, he's just going to win. So he's got that going for him. Serum Visions for Ryland. Another negate. Path and Supreme Verdict. I, I think he'll keep both. Yeah, I mean, you, just, you have to stop Daryl from killing you. Yep, just continue to sweep the board, sweep the board. He goes top and bottom, so we'll keep one, but not the other. I'm interested to see what he's looking for. And here's Supreme Verdict. Daryl loses the three creatures, gets a 3-3. Three, three. Round passes. He's got two counter spells at the ready. So this is, this is the tougher spot where I start getting concerned about the Amulet Titan deck, uh, that he, he Daryl might get run out of threats. Right. It's going to take more than the Beast Token. The attack for three is good now, but next turn he's facing down the Colonnade as a blocker. And you see Ancient Stirrings and Rylan Cats negate. I don't think he would normally negate that card. He's just a little flush on counter spells right now, or just he's going to counter anything he can. Yep. Can't carry that mana forward in the next turn. Gets a card off of this. Daryl does have an Amulet of Vigor in hand. He's kept at least one in. His hand is Teleria West Amulet. So he'll make Amulet, transmute Teleria West. If he goes for Summoner's Pact, Ryland has him covered. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what he's going to do. Yeah, Summoner's Pact, Ryland, that's going to get dispelled. Yeah, the line here, and because he has that one Amulet, he was trying to set up a big hasty Titan here, but Ryland had him covered. Yeah, it's boards like these, and going back to the sideboard, the card Mortuary Mire, this is where Daryl would want something like that. Yep. He could keep... A lot of his stuff's been exiled, but there's some threats still available. Yeah, the, the Titan and Thrag Tusk are mm -hmm. still in the yard. And, and this is going to be very hard. Daryl's now playing off the top of the deck. Ryland can snap cast a Sphinx's Revelation. Or that, that threat is looming. You see, once Ryland hits a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. And Ryland's got to start thinking about winning this game. Just over 20 minutes left in the round time. Daryl yeah. is Daryl won game one. Because Ryland's game plan is to just do this, remove all the creatures, and then win eventually, Ryan's win condition is glacial. Yep. And losing game one means you're absolutely right. They're cl the time concern is a big thing. Yeah, really hard to win two games on that game plan. Spreading seas drawn from Ryland, not much he can do with that. 
He is going to start going to work, it looks like, with Celestial Colonnade. Four damage in, puts Daryl to 21. Mm -hmm. And while he'd prefer to sit there and do nothing until Daryl just runs out of cards, you just really have to, in these timed rounds, try to win the game. Explore from Daryl round, letting that one go through. <laughs> that one's a bit lower impact than Ancient Stirrings. Yeah. See round 10. Attack with the 3 3. Round will block with the Colonnade. But it does tap Ryland low. Daryl gets a chance to resolve something. He's got Tireless Tracker, it looks like, in hand. He'll go ahead and make the Tracker. Gemstone Mine gets a clue. Trigger on, round will pass. Let's see if Daryl does not. I believe he only plays the two forests. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, there is no basic. Yeah. Got to make room for a lot of non basics in this deck. Yeah, 29 lands in the main, but just two basics. This, just this, can't. This, this deck's not beating non basic land hate with basic lands anyway. So no, that's <laughs> no the reason. No reason to go heavy on basics. Yeah, you can't be Blood Moon. You play two basics, just four cards like Ghost Quarter and Path, so that you don't always get blown out by them. Yeah. And you see, his mana is not really an issue here. <laughs> Still know, capable of making somewhere around 16 mana. But careful here. Ryland has tapped out on that block. Daryl's going to pack for Primeval Titan. Yeah, that path to exile was pretty aggressive. Well, I, I think it, it's not the path that's aggressive as much as the colonnade the to colonnade block. block as well. Yeah, and I remember Daryl can't attack with the Titan this turn because he has already attacked. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about a Slayer Stronghold kill. Yeah, you do have to worry about some good value, though. Yeah, now what's limiting Daryl is actually the number of Teleria. I believe there's just not that many Teleria Wests left in his deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can bounce them when they're on the battlefield, but once you transmute them, they're just in they're your gone. graveyard. Yeah, you only have three. See what he can do. If you see Vesuva, Daryl's going to look to Vesuva and copy one of Ryland's Celestial Colonnades here. Yeah, with Ryland at 10, you can start forcing some damage there. Right. And it's easy enough for Daryl to activate them. He's got white and blue mana. Mm -hmm. Deck very easily makes all colors except for black. It's, it's really just kind of trying to find every threat possible. So Vesuva copying your opponent's colonnade is another threat. He still has a Teleria West left, though, so it looks like he's going to go for that first. Which would make sense. Yeah, that's a tough spot. This is really... I mean, the deck's hard enough to play on its own, but these kinds yeah. of games are really going to test the amulet player. This is very far from what the deck is trying to do as an A plan. So he's going to do, he's going to bazooka, a bazooka bog to hit Round's Graveyard. No flashbacks on Sphinx's Revelation. They're going to untap, and then Daryl's going to pick up the Teleria West. He needed to get a bounce land because he wanted that Teleria West in his hand. And then he'll transmute the Teleria West, seeing what he wants to get. A pact of some sort is likely. And it looks like it's just going to be another green pact, which he'll fire off immediately while Ryland's tapped out. Yep. So Daryl's on the hook for two pacts right now. Not much of a problem. He has plenty of land. Yep. You won't see any Armageddons in Modern. This wouldn't be the deck to cast him either. <laughs> but one thing that I really do like is how Daryl has made his timing on Summoner's packs this game has really been excellent. Yeah, when you resolve Summoner's Pack into a handful, you see Negate here, Mana Leak, where uh, Daryl actually had to tap pretty low that turn. Yeah, every time Ryland has tapped out, then Daryl's just cashed in a bunch of Summoner's Packs. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of this was just, it started with Ryland attacking with Colony on the previous turn, and that was largely just a concession yeah. to having to close the match. I think that the play was correct given the confines of tournament magic, but if these players had two, three hours to finish this match, you wouldn't see that attack at all. What, what I would like to see from Ryland was either a decision to attack with Colonnade or block with Colonnade, but not both. You saw he used one to attack and one to block the beast, and I think that yep. investment was too many. Yep. The block looked fine. The, the attack was certainly aggressive. He, he's at 10. You got to not die to that beast. That, right. That all makes sense. Cavern of Souls looks like it's going to be hit by a Spreading Seas. He'll, he'll hit the one that's on Giant, force Daryl to replay it. And Gideon Jura looks like make it Detention Sphere on the Primeval Titan. Yeah, 
Yeah, thought about playing Gideon, but uh, that yeah. Titan's just going to kill it on the following turn. Well, he slay your stronghold action or some such. Yeah, and he's going to play it, I think, knowing that that's what's going to happen. You see that Gideon goes up to eight. There's no card like Hive Mind anymore in the Amulet decks, so there's <laughs> no. I mean, before there'd be the risk with Ryan tapping out like this that Daryl would play Hive Mind, Summoner's Pact, go. Yep. Uh, there's because all the wins use the attack step here. Gideon plusing is a safe way to tap out. As far right. as you're not going to lose this turn, Daryl might make a ton of things. Right. But Ryland will get an untap. Pays for two packs easily with mana left over to Titan, because that's <laughs> what this deck does. Bounce sounds are great. Well, you still have to watch out here for that walking ballista that's in Daryl's deck. That is, start counting those lands. <laughs> no, no, this this is very real. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. We see Slayer Stronghold on the Titan. It'll attack, knocking down Gideon Jura. And Daryl with uh, a Titan trigger here will actually have more than enough mana to make a lethal walking ballista with Ryland at 10. Let's see, two. <laughs> let's, we'll, I'm gonna con let's see. <laughs> Yeah, he does have 20 lands, so you are absolutely right. He can make an uncounterable caverned walking ballista for a lot. It's pretty good. And the Sphinx's Revelation was hit by Bajuka Bog. So Ryan can't gain life in response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Ryan is going to be able to beat the walking ballista. Yeah, as far as ways to gain life, there's nothing else besides that Revelation hanging out in the deck here. A heads-up play you could see in some lists is if he had something like, um, not Nevermore. The card that gives you protection from a card Rune name. Halo. Rune, Rune Halo. That's not in this deck list. Uh, and that would be a pretty wild play to make in the first place. I recently lost a uh, PPTQ Finals to a blue-eyed opponent who <laughs> Rune Haloed my walking ballista. I taught you a lesson. Shows what I know. Here's, <laughs> here's Sphinx Supreme Verdict. Take care of the Titan. There are copies of Leyline of Sanctity in Ryland's deck in his sideboard, and that would protect him. I don't know if he's brought them in. We're pretty deep into the deck. If he thought it mattered, good chance he would have seen it by now. Now, the issue here is you see Ryan's going to go for a draw step and dealing click. As if Daryl has a Teleria West in hand, which he does, you can't take it. Daryl does draw the Walking Ballista, but as long as he has 23 mana and a way to reset the Cavern of Souls to Construct, there is no answer here. Yeah, so the hand here is Asusa, Teleria West, Walking Ballista. So I suppose you'd have to transmute the Teleria West to go find a bounce land to pair with that. Well, except you need to use the Teleria West to, to find the Ballista. So you probably just right. need to wait until you draw yeah, with, the with bounce land. With the click land. taking the Ballista, yeah, his hand is shy by one element. Counting lands here. Looks like 16 in his, in his hand. So you see seven. I will let Daryl count it out. Transmute of Teleria West. Question is, does he have a cavern set to construct just yet? He'll find Walking Ballista. I don't believe a cavern is set to construct. Yeah, Daryl hasn't seen a mana leak yet this game. Maybe he thinks that Ryland's not on that card. It's not a main, you know, it, it's fine not. You see a good amount of logic some, yeah. knots these days. Right. Well, that'd be a hard one for him to beat anyway. Yeah. Uh, Ryland does have cryptic, commanda, cryptic command mana up. That's one you got to worry about. So Daryl's asking a question away from table. Looks like we see 19 mana here. Yeah, 19. Just short. Yeah. Now, he can do it over multiple turns, but then he opens himself up to cards like Path to Exile. Right. Yeah, we, we, we've seen the hand. If this Ballista doesn't just come in for lethal, he's going to mm. have difficulty closing the game from that point. Well, our thing is if he's waiting for a bounce land, there are only three bounce lands left in his deck. He'd want a bounce land to reset the cavern to construct.
Okay, it looks like there's a rules question goes all the way to the head judge. We're going to come back to the booth for a second here. In game number two, Daryl Ayers versus Ryland Talaferro. Right now, in post-board games here, we have Amulet Titan versus Blue-White Control. And this has been really interesting. We're looking at the threats that Daryl has left. This walking ballista seems to really be the prize, mm -hmm. but I, he's used his last Teleria West, and most of his Titans are dead. So this, uh, there's a lot of pressure on this one. <laughs> it looks like the question has been resolved, so we're going to bring you back to the match. I believe one Hornet Queen, one Tireless Tracker left on Daryl's side. So it looks like he's going to use a Vesuva in his hand to copy Cavern of Souls, untapping it, naming Construct, making it with 20 mana, walking Ballista on 10, and he's going to go for the win here. It looks good. 7, 8, 9, and exactly 10. Ryland has no response, so it is Daryl Ayers, 2-0, winning the match over Ryland Talaferro. Yeah, and once you get the Ballista on 10 on the battlefield, there's really just no way to stop that.